Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It's time for another top 10 movies that you can watch for July 2021 and I've got some real oddball and some fun movies for you to check out this month. So let's get started and jump in to number 10. Number 10, Columbiana. A young woman grows up to be a stone-cold assassin after witnessing her parents' murder as a child in Bogota. She works with her uncle as a hitman by day, but her personal time is spent engaging in vigilante murders that she hopes will lead her to her ultimate target, the mobster responsible for her parents' death. There's not a great deal of surprises in Colombiana. It's just a really interesting and fun action movie. Zoe Saldana stars as the main character and she is pretty awesome and what elevates it from just being all right to being quite watchable and engaging and fun. Number nine, Knockoff. A Hong Kong fashion designer who had previously been involved in knockoffs of major label merchandise attempts to go straight with the help of his new partner who is secretly an undercover CIA agent involved with an investigation of the black market. Their main product, Denims, is involved with terrorists, which brings in more CIA to investigate. The perfect team-up of Jean-Claude Van Damme and Rob Schneider uh, in this absolutely mental movie that seems to have been devoid of any kind of cohesion or logic. It is utterly bonkers. Yet, by having no logic, it creates a purely entertaining movie. One where, sure, the plot doesn't really matter, uh, but it's just so much dang fun that I can't help myself but recommend this complete oddball of a Van Damme movie. Number eight, Shooter. Bob Lee Swagger is one of the world's greatest marksmen. He's left the military having been hung out to dry. When he's recruited by a colonel to help find a way that the president of the US might be assassinated, he does the work, but the assassination still goes down and Swaggart is quickly the fall guy. Wounded and hunted by thousands, he goes aground and aided by two unlikely allies, searches for the truth. This is one of those uh, Mark Wahlberg movies that I've watched way too many times. I love it. I just find it so much fun. It's like the perfect kind of Saturday night movie. Couple of beers, pizza, shooter on the TV, pure joy. It has a great Mark Wahlberg performance. It's directed really well. It has that kind of conspiratorial aspect of it that I always love. And it has a man against the odds fighting for survival. Someone who's extremely capable. <laughs> yes, it's tropey. I don't care. I love the film. Number seven, Maniac. Frank Zito misses his mother, who's died years before. She was abusive to him and made money selling her body, but Frank still misses her. He tries to keep her spirit alive by killing young women and putting their scalps on mannequins. Photographer Anna De Antoni takes a picture of him in the park and he pursues and befriends her. Is she the one he's been looking for? William Lustig directs, you've got Joe Spinell in the lead role, and this is one of those early 80s uh, movies that had a real kind of video nasty aesthetic to it. It was labelled as one of those. It's got some wonderfully horrible murder sequences head explosion sequences. It is a really nasty character at the heart of this one who is severely damaged and doing horrid things. It's directed superbly, acted uh, terrifically and is really unsettling. Number six, dodgeball. The odd members of a local gym rally together in order to save their beloved gym from becoming yet another property of a heartless national chain. In order to raise the needed funds, they enter into an international sports competition with a cash prize for the winner. The competition, Dodgeball. The mid-2000s was where you got a lot of ridiculous comedy movies and to be honest, this one was really funny and it has an absolute stellar cast all the way through it. People who deliver on that. You get Ben Stiller 
as the bad guy in this one who's wonderful. You get Vince Vaughn as the leader of the good guys who really can't be bothered but is forced to become the man, the hero, the legend. It is immensely silly but terrifically funny, which is all that counts when you're watching a comedy. You want the smiles, the giggles and the laughter and this delivers on that. Number five, Six String Samurai. A mysterious and powerful hero of the classic kind, Buddy is as skilled with his guitar as he is with his samurai sword. Thrown together with a kid whom he saves in a spectacular battle, the two of them must now escape their enemies and reach Las Vegas, the rock and roll capital of this future world. Six String Samurai is a bonkers action movie, very stylized and very unusual about a post-apocalyptic future where musicians do battle to try and take over Elvis's throne. Kind of. It's a little bit more um, interesting than that. It has some wonderful direction and musical choices, but it's very weird and different. I hope you like it. Number four. Aliens, 57 years after surviving an apocalyptic attack aboard her space vessel by a merciless space creature, Ripley awakens from hypersleep and tries to warn anyone who will listen about the predators. Although she's ignored at first, when contact with colonists on a planet thought safe is suddenly lost, Ripley and the military team are sent to confront the aliens. Taking the horror of aliens and, and changing it into a more action-centric uh, film is what James Cameron did and created a fantastic sequel to a terrific movie. You've got quotable lines, you've got terrific moments of action, explosions of characters that you genuinely care for, of people in genuine terror uh, and danger. People will be lost across this journey, people we love and it's just so impactful and has a great finale. Number three, Fight Club. An insomniac, unnamed narrator needs a fantasy to escape from his deadly boring life. He tries joining a cancer support group. However, the only thing they do in the group is cry. But then he's on a plane on his way back from what a viewer would assume is a business trip. Our unnamed narrator encounters Tyler Durden a soap-selling badass who happens to run a secret fight club in the dining park a lot with his friends, who follow eight simple rules. Fight Club is a chaotic masterpiece. Edward Norton stars as the unnamed narrator. We've got Brad Pitt, who is fantastic as Tyler Durden. And with David Fincher directing, you get this movie that is layered, that's impactful, that has something to say, and is hugely entertaining at the heart of it as well. Incredibly well constructed. This is a movie that shouldn't really exist. Cult classic is written all over it for a good reason. One of my favourite movies of all time. Number two, Take Shelter. Curtis, a father and husband, is starting to experience bad dreams and hallucinations. Assuming mental illness, he seeks medical help and counselling. However, Fearing the worst, he starts to build an elaborate and expensive storm shelter in their back garden. The storm shelter threatens to tear apart his family, threatens his sanity and his standing in the community, but he builds it to save his family's life. Jeff Nichols directs this absolutely wonderful movie and you get Michael Shannon giving a tremendous performance as the main character of Curtis. Now, to see him become filled and racked with anxiety throughout the movie is in itself anxious. Uh, watching this movie, I feel anxious. It makes me emote with the character. I feel similarly trapped as he does wa just watching the movie. It's one of those movies that always deeply affects me. And although it doesn't come out and give you answers at the end of it, you feel as if you've been through a journey with Curtis and they might be on the better path. One of the things I love about the movie is the stripped back, honest conversations that he has with his wife. There's no overly dramatic moments. There's no uh, great monologues. They just have proper sit down conversations that get to the heart of issues and feel real. This is a movie that will affect you. Number one, Deep Red. A jazz pianist witnesses the bloody murder of a psychotic who lives in his building. Disturbed by his inability 
to understand the significance of the detail he saw at the scene of a crime, he partners with a journalist in an attempt to solve the mystery. Gradually, they unravel a web of secrets, but the serial killer seems to be one step ahead. Possibly my favourite Giallo and possibly my favourite Dario Argento movie. I love Deep Red from its wonderfully effective score to the creepy moments that it has, to its blood-curdling death scenes that are unnecessarily nasty at moments. You get this great mystery at the heart of it as we follow our main character trying to unravel why these people are being murdered. What information do they have to the grander scheme of things? It's expertly laid out, great score, great direction, uh, great set pieces and just utterly wonderful. Highly, highly recommended. So there we have it. 10 fantastic, hopefully, movies that you can check out this month. I hope you find something there that you're really interested in checking out. If there's something that I've missed off my list, something that you think should be on there, let me know in the comment box below and next month it might make my list. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.